Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to be doing a Q&A. This is a 500,000 Q&A video. I have not done a Q&A since mm, a couple months ago. The last um, milestone Q&A I did was 100,000 and then I did another one after that a few months ago. But I really wanted to do one for 500,000 because I feel like it's like kind of monumental moment, you know? Half a million, that's crazy. Saying half a million seems so much different than saying 500,000. But I really wanna thank you guys for 500,000 subscribers. Um, I don't even know how this happened. I feel like I just hit 100,000 like last year and I'm just like, uh, I still have a hard time realizing that you guys like watching my videos. Making videos has been a really fun way for me to talk about stuff that I don't think anyone would want to listen to me in real life talk about. So in a way, I hear you guys say that like watching movies with me is like watching a movie with your friend or something, but for me it is also like watching a movie with a friend. I feel like you guys are my friends in that way because I get to talk about tons of stuff that I feel like would just be annoying to people in real life. And maybe it is annoying to you, but I can't see your reactions <laughs> in real life, so it's very nice for me. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me questions for a video and I'm going to answer them. If I'm ever gonna ask for questions, it's either gonna be on my YouTube community page tab or um, on Instagram, because I feel like that's the easiest way to get questions. Today's video is sponsored by Casetify. Now I've worked with Casetify before, but I'm here to work with them again. Now, if you're like me and you drop your phone all the time, then Casetify is just for you because their cases actually come with military grade protection for your phone. Casetify lets you have the best of both worlds with having a military grade protection for your phone while also being super cute and stylish. They can protect your phone from up to more than a six feet drop. Ready? Ooh, that was very aggressive. That was... Uh... Oh! And guess what? No cracks, baby. No cracks in your face. Casetify protects your phone without it being super bulky and ugly. That was so harsh, but some protective phone cases actually are really bulky, ugly, and they just kind of protect your phone, but they look not the best. Casetify has done tons of collabs with brands and your favorite celebrities. They've got collections with everyone from Lisa Frank to Rolling Stones. They've done one with Hello Kitty. They've done one with Avery Ovard. So make sure you guys go check out the collabs they have on Casetify's website because there are tons to choose from and they're always really cute. Case of I also has customizable cases on their website where you can pick out what type of case you want, what color, you can do um, a monogram, your name, any word you want really, and you can do even like a picture collage on your case. So there's tons of stuff from Caseify to choose from, whether that's designs that they already have or from the customizable section. So if you guys want to match with me and we can have matching cases together, make sure you go to caseify.com slash trend to get 20% off your order. I think this question is very interesting. It says, how do you feel about people always comparing you with male YouTubers? I hate it. I um, I understood it at the beginning. I understood it because I was less known and I still feel like I'm not like super known, but um, I understood it at the beginning because it's like, oh, you're like this YouTuber, I like this YouTuber and like you're like them. But now that I feel like I've kind of created uh, my own brand, it's kind of more individual because I feel like when you're starting off new content that's similar to someone else's, um, you can see a lot of the similarities, but now I'm like, I feel like I've grown into my own brand i feel like so when people do compare me and say i'm like the female version of um any male creator i'm kind of just like ah i just kind of want to be trend now you know i feel like i was and it's something that i get super mad about but i do kind of just get like ah like i just want to be trend i don't want to be the female version of someone else you know which is not like a bad thing i don't think these content creators that I get compared to or said I'm the female version of as a bad thing. I don't take it as an insult because obviously I love them. Like they're great. I'm just saying for me personally, like I really want to make it a point in my career to be just trend and just, you know, known for me and not being compared to um, male content creators because I know the, I feel like the commentary section of YouTube is very dominated by males. So, um, especially if it's like comedic commentary, it's very dominated by males. So I get it. Um, it's not something I get like super angry about, but it is kind of like a, ah, oh, 
it's like a little disappointing to me sometimes because like I want to be just Trin. I want to be known for being Trin, not like male version of someone else. What's your favorite movie purely for its cinematography? Plot can be total garbage, lol. I think Assassination Nation is the best, like it is has beautiful cinematography. The way it's produced is so freaking gorgeous, visually stunning. The techniques that they use within the film to um, tell the story visually is incredible. Lighting is just amazing. They use so many different colors. They don't shy away from using a bunch of colors with lighting and using um, different uh, cinematography um, tricks that aren't really like the norm. They kind of go a little bit more out there with it. And I loved Assassination Nations for the cinematography. I understand the plot has some holes and some kind of errors within it. I think it was like a little, um, poorly written, but it's still one of my favorite movies. Like, I think, you know, after watching it, I think I've watched it about like three times. Um, I understand where they're trying to go with it. I think the execution on screenplay and stuff was like a little bit um, messy at some points and didn't have the best uh, delivery on some parts. But I think overall, like, it's a really visually stunning film. The acting is really good. And the last monologue of Assassination Nation is literally everything to me. The last scene, the last monologue is so good. But overall, the cinematography is just amazing. They have some really, really cool shots that are just so visually stunning and pleasing and satisfying to watch. They use slow-mo in a very good way i feel like they use slow-mo and not a way to drag things out but to kind of build suspense i feel like sometimes in films they use slow-mo and it just kind of feels so drawn out and it feels so unnecessary um i like it when slow motion builds suspense within a movie and not just like oh like we're just adding this to add it it's like unnecessary anyways that was like a really long rant about assassinations nations but that movie the cinematography i love and it's probably not like the best cinematography ever like people probably thinking like 1917 or something but i really love assassinations nations for its cinematography even though the plot does have some issues um someone just said your style slash aesthetic inspiration um i am just constantly stealing outfits from other people online i mean I love Avery Ovard, I love Kennedy Walsh for style. I don't have like an aesthetic that I usually stick to. I feel like someone else could probably identify my aesthetic better than I could because I don't really know. I don't like zone in on one aesthetic. I'm like, that's it. Avery Ovard, Kennedy Walsh, um, Best Dressed, um, Emma Chamberlain, obviously. Emma Chamberlain like sets the trends, girl. She's setting them and I love her so much. Like she's fashion icon to me. I love her. Someone asked, how do you deal with mental health? Um, I go to therapy and I take my medication. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any tips for that. That's why I go to therapy to help with learning how to deal with my mental health so i'm sorry that that's not like the best answer it probably doesn't help at all but being transparent therapy and my medication not saying that medication is for everyone by the way I'm not saying that med medication will fix all your mental health problems i'm saying for me personally my situation medication did help but that's just me so i'm not saying meds or no meds is the correct way it's a very uh person to person situation it differs for everyone so take everything i say with a grain of salt um very personal experience so very personal uh solutions i would say uh so yeah i just do i how do i deal with mental health i go through therapy <laughs> dream movie soundtrack like for what genre plus musical musical artist i do have a playlist on my apple music my apple music i think is just trend level um and it's uh mm, i think it's called songs that songs that feel like a 2000s movie soundtrack and that is like peak 2000s movie rom-com soundtrack amazing that i think i put together pretty well so i think that would probably be dream soundtrack i've been really getting into listening to scores too by the way i love listening to scores in my free time i have a whole scores playlist because 
Something about it just feels so epic and feels so climactic when you're listening to movie scores in your free time. Like, if you are doing schoolwork, listen to the Social Network soundtrack. You will fucking buzz through that shit. In motion from the Social Network soundtrack, literally, I edited a video so fast to it. I was buzzing through it because it just made me feel so hype and I was like, yeah, I'm freaking hacker right now. I can do anything I want to, even though like the social network was not about hacking, but I just felt like I was doing such pivotal work right now, even though I was just editing a movie commentary. Someone asked, do you think people could have good or bad movie taste? Um, I think as a joke, I think that people can have like good or move bad good or bad movie taste. I think I say it as a joke a lot, like, oh, you have bad taste in movies if you like X, Y, Z or whatever. But I think when it comes to movies and art in general, I think that since it is such a subjective realm, it's hard to say what's good and bad. It's hard to say what's good and bad taste because it is all subjective. I don't know. I think it's a hard question because I think like, it does kind of seem pretentious to say like you have bad taste in movies if you don't like Midsommar, but like who's to say? Like I don't, I don't really know. I think as a joke, it's fun to say like you have bad taste in movies, but I think like seriously, like delving down into like breaking it down, like I don't know if you can have like good and bad taste in movies. I think some people can agree that you would. Personally, I think I lie more in the gray area of since it's such a subjective realm and any opinions on art is subjective nothing is objective when it comes to opinions on art that i just can't say you know what was the last book you've read for enjoyment i think the last book i read for enjoyment was the queen of nothing from the cruel prince uh series i believe so i don't even know if i finished it i can't remember it was a long time ago i'm pretty sure it was the queen of nothing i love that though it was so dramatic. What I read, what I remember from it, I was like, wow, that's so dramatic. And I loved it. I love drama. Um, I got a lot of questions about if I'm single. Someone said, are you single? If not, what would be your ideal partner? How did you meet your boyfriend? Current relationship status? Um, how did you meet your boyfriend? Show us your boyfriend. <laughs> I got a bunch of questions about this. Um, yes, I do have a boyfriend. <laughs> um, I think that's all you have to know. I do have a boyfriend. We met online. I first saw him on TikTok. I followed him on TikTok for, um, I think since like last year, fall, last year, winter, I think. Um, so that's kind of, like I followed him like casually, like just like, oh, like he makes funny videos and I followed him. And then recently I was trying to reach out to people like creators more because i tend to kind of jump into my shell when it comes to like interacting socially with people it was like a moment where i was like i'm gonna reach out to a bunch of people i'm just gonna you know shoot my shot and by like shot i don't mean like i was you know shooting my shot romantically to every single person. I mean, just like trying to network and m make friendships because I want to make friendships with people, but I am too shy. He was one of the people that I DM'd and I said that he was funny and that I liked his TikToks and he was like, thanks. And then he was like, I've never seen anything of yours, but I'm sure you've made people chuckle before. And he said chuckle and I was like, okay because i wanted to keep the conversation going so i was like oh i saw you have a youtube channel if you need any tips on you know youtube um i'd love to help you know because i wanted to be a little helping hand and then he was like oh yeah you're gonna help me surpass you and that's our first conversation was him basically saying that he's gonna surpass me in youtube subscribers um and now we're together so yes Noah is my boyfriend. Um, do I even want to shout him out? Do we do that? Am I going to do that? <laughs> no free promo, dude. Everyone's got to pay for their slots, so get fucked, Noah. No free promotion. You got to pay for your spots, just like every other sponsorship I do. You pay for the placement. 
You know my rates. Come talk to me when you want a little shout out. Favorite song at the moment, I've really been loving Funeral by Phoebe Bridgers. I I just love it so much. It's it's very sad. It's very sad, but very much touches my heart and like I connect with it a lot. What was your biggest accomplishment this year? Also, I love you. Thank you, I love you too. I think I think biggest accomplishment would probably be hitting 500,000 subscribers. I feel like that's a pretty big accomplishment. I think hitting half a million is kind of crazy and seems unreal. Doesn't seem real to me and I feel like um, usually I'd be like, oh yeah, numbers don't matter. It's not that big of a deal. But I think I'm trying to be more confident and understand the level of things and I feel like this is something that I can be like yes it is an accomplishment yes I should be proud of it and I am proud of it and I'm thankful for it as well and very grateful that I um, even got to this point because of you guys and I think that's just crazy um, if I would ever collab with Dylan is in trouble of course I would collab with Dylan is in trouble everyone always asks me if I ever would literally you guys ask me if I would collab with people like I have any say in the matter as if I am like in charge of it and I can arrange those types of things like I cannot but I would literally collab like anyone you say I probably would collab with like Dylan Kennedy like I would love to I think that's so fun and like I don't know so when you guys ask me if I would collab with Dylan the answer is always yes because I would love to collab with Dylan is in trouble. He's literally like so nice, by the way. If you guys ever question if Dylan is in trouble is nice, he's so nice. Literally so like helpful. Anytime I've come to him with like anything, he's so sweet and so like helpful, like genuinely helpful, like not just like shitty advice, like he gives really good advice. So Dylan is great. <laughs> um, I just went on like a Dylan ramble, but um, I'm just, it's crazy to me because Dylan was like one of the first people I started watching that made movie commentaries, huge inspiration, as you can tell from the fucking format of my videos, that he's such a huge inspiration. And of course I would want to collab with him. That's like no question about that. What's it like to have so many Sims? I don't, I think people, I don't know. I don't have people like sliding in my DMs being like, hey mamas, or like trying to get with me. No one's shooting their shot in my DMs. <laughs> like I feel like people think that sometimes or like people like me <laughs> and they do not, which is fine. I'm taken anyways. What's the hardest part about editing and finding your editing style? I think the hardest part of editing is basically like the time and understanding what works for you. I think I've went through a lot of different phases when it comes to editing my videos. I think I went through a time of even possibly over editing um, and I then I went under editing and then I, I've kind of gotten a flow now to where I, I like um, the level of editing I do. And by that, I mean like the effects or the sound effects, text, uh, little bits. Um, I think I found what's uh, a good balance for me. Um, I think the hardest part is literally just getting into that groove and looking at the amount of footage you have and not like being super overwhelmed by it because for me like two three hours that's a lot and it's not something that i can like cut out big chunks it's like i have to sit through it and see all the commentary that i did so i think the hardest part is just the amount and the time that it takes like editing is not a fast process it can be um some people are really fast at ed editors i'm not the fastest i think i can be pretty fast but i can also be really slow because i get distracted i think it would just be time and also getting used to listening to yourself um i think editing other people is way easier than editing yourself because you become very self-aware about yourself when you are editing you notice how many times you repeat the same word or when you have a word that you just stick to when you're filming because I have noticed that so many times when I'm filming, when I stick to a certain phrase, I used to say, uh, you know, after every sentence, and I still do that. Um, I say, um, a lot as like a filler. I say like a lot as a filler. And I've seen the comments of people being like, you say like and um way too much. And I understand that it's annoying, but 
whenever you're like filming and you're just trying to talk naturally those words come out so much and when you're editing it's like shut the fuck up like when i'm editing i get so annoyed by myself how long does it take to film commentaries it takes about three three hours for a movie commentary if the movie's about two hours two and a half hours it takes about three hours i would say it takes a lot longer because i do get ready for videos so it takes me about like two hours to get ready um and then it takes three hours to film so a filming day is like five hours could be longer like five to eight hours of filming and just the day so it's not like it's like a whole shift it's a full eight hour shift when people don't have to get ready for videos i'm like that seems so nice but i like time wise it seems nice like yeah you don't have to take time out of your day to get ready for filming but i love getting ready for filming i love trying out new looks wearing new stuff um I've wanted to start matching my outfits to the movies, so I think I'm gonna try to do that because I think that's so fun to kind of be on theme while watching a movie. What is the best documentary you've ever seen? P.S. I love you. I recently watched America, American Next Door Neighbor on Netflix. I really liked that one. I liked it that it was practically all found footage. I really liked that style of documentary. One of my favorite documentaries I ever watched was Abducted in Plain Sight. I know it's like a really dark, really heartbreaking story, but like the way that they did the documentary was wonderful to me. I really liked it. I'm much more of a biopic girl. My favorite genres of movies is like coming of age biopics. Not coming of age biopics, but coming of age and biopics. I love biopics. I know some people call them biopics and I don't know which one is the right way to say it, but I always say biopics because I think of biography. So biopics, I don't really know. I love biopics. All, almost like all of my favorite movies are biopics. Like The Social Network, I, Tanya, Steve Jobs, Kill Your Darlings is a biopic. Uh, the Stanford Prison Experiment. Uh, I'm trying to think of more biopics that I have watched. Oh, Big Eyes is a biopic. I freaking love biopics. So if you like, ask me for a movie recommendation, I'm either gonna suggest you a coming of age story or a biography. What's a perception people have of you that they are wrong about slash right about? I think a perception that people are really wrong about, or I, I guess it surprises me when people think People watch my videos and they think I'm really dumb and superficial and materialistic and shallow. Mostly men that think that. Even people I know in real life have thought that and it's sad. People think that because I make videos like about young adult movies or movies that are targeted at young girls people think that i am stupid that my opinion is less intelligent or valuable i guess again mostly men you see male commentary channels do the same movies i do and everyone's like yeah go go dude rip that movie to shreds you're awesome but then if i do it they're like you're so annoying i bet you fucking love this shit like i don't know i think it's just i don't like it when people think that i'm shallow or superficial or dumb because of my videos because i feel like i say something that's kind of like a little brain fart blonde moment people are like you're so fucking stupid i bet you you fucking failed all your classes you never get into college you stupid little bitch you're such a stupid little girl but then if like a man says something funny or something stupid as a joke they they're like oh my god he's so fucking funny dude i love this guy but if i say something funny or like stupid for a joke people are like she's actually fucking stupid like she's an actual idiot and i hate that so much i hate it and i think that people get right about me is that i am more sensitive 
I think a lot of people see my videos, they can see that I have a more sensitive heart, not super confident. I think people kind of get that right about me when they see me as more sensitive, more laid back, or not laid back, but just like a sensitive girl, because I am very sensitive. What easily frustrates you slash makes you angry? Um, I think now what I've realized that easily frustrates me or makes me angry is um, feeling unheard which I never really experienced before. I never really knew that was something that really upset me or really like easily frustrated me. But when I feel like I am being dismissed or unheard in a conversation or in being interrupted or I don't know, just disregarded when it's coming to a uh, conversation between two people, like between me and another person, I don't like being interrupted I'm not saying that I don't like being interrupted at all during a conversation because I feel like that is like a part of a conversation is to kind of be interrupted sometimes. I think it's when I am like talking and the interruption is like dismissing what I've said already. Um, so yeah, I think being interrupted or uh, unheard, dismissed is like very spoken over is very hard for me. It's usually men that do that. So I guess that's just like part of being a woman is, you know, being talked over. Ah. <laughs> what is your favorite comedy movie? Um, Zombieland. I think Zombieland is a great comedy. It makes me laugh every single time I watch it. Jojo Rabbit I thought was very funny, but it was also kind of sad. I think some maybe like older ones that are kind of like the typical like old school comedy. I thought Kicking and Screaming was really fun with Will Ferrell. Um, School of Rock, so funny. Oh my God, Kung Fu Panda. I love Kung Fu Panda, dude. Celebrity crush, my celebrity crushes. I have so many female celebrity crushes and I have like one or two male celebrity crushes. My male celebrity crush, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Logan Lerman. Damn. Um, oh, young Keanu Reeves. Oh. Young Keanu Reeves is everything to me. Oh, Young Heath Ledger. I love Young Heath Ledger. I'm trying to look at my wall so I can see like the celebrities. Girl celebrity crushes, Megan Fox, Kristen Stewart, Zendaya, Lucy Liu. Okay, yeah, Lucy Liu, here we go. Winona Ryder, Suki Waterhouse, um, Robert Pattinson. Sorry, I had to scream that one out. Uh <laughs> Anne Hathaway. Okay, come on, Anne Hathaway. Oh my god, I do have kind of a crush on Jesse Eisenberg. I know you're probably thinking you're fucking- uh, I will not be taking any questions, comments, or concerns about my crush on Jesse Eisenberg. Harry Shum Jr. I used to have the biggest crush on Harry Shum Jr. Devin Aoki. Okay, Devin Aoki. Samara Weaving. Yes, Samara Weaving. Laura Harrier. I think that's how- you, Harrier. Harrier. I, I think that's how you say it. Daniel Sherman. Dam Daniel Sherman. Sherman. Isaac from Teen Wolf, you know it. I think those are all my celebrity crushes. <laughs> I don't know what that, those say about me, but. Cannibalism, thoughts? Um, don't do it. If someone, I shouldn't say this online. No, yeah. I'm saying if someone was like cooking their, <laughs> I'm not gonna finish that sentence. Cause I wouldn't do it without someone's consent. Like if someone was just offering it, like I wouldn't be like, yeah, let me cut off your arm and eat it. But like if someone was like doing it as like an experiment to see what they tasted like, and they offered me a bit, I would wanna see. Is that so wrong to have a curiosity about what the human flesh would taste like cooked? Is it? Obviously it's a crime, cannibalism is a crime without someone's consent. If you just eat people and they don't want to be eaten, that's wrong, right? But if someone's like doing an experiment where they cut off a part of their leg and they're they're cooking it to see what it tastes like and they offered me some, I'd be like, okay, is that so wrong? I don't see it as that wrong. Cause if I was cooking a part of my leg, which might happen one day, and I was offering it to people, I wouldn't be offended. I would want some people to try. It's like the same thing about how people try um, people's breast milk. Like obviously if you just suck it from her without her consent, that's fucked up. But if she's offering and she's like pouring, like I don't see the issue with that. Obviously it's like very different because this is something your body's producing rather than just your body. 
I don't know. You shouldn't have asked me my thoughts on cannibalism because obviously bad. Cannibalism, bad. Without consent. I think if someone's consenting to being eaten, like obviously not their whole entire body. Like I don't want like consent, like not like, oh my God, if I die, you can eat my body. Like that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like they're alive, you know? This is getting me in trouble. I'm there, the FBI are at my door right now. Those are all my questions I'm gonna do for today, guys. I hope you liked this q and I bet it was really long. <laughs> um, I hope you guys liked it. Again, I wanna say thank you for 500,000 subscribers. It really means the world to me and I'm super grateful for everyone that has subscribed, liked, commented at any point in time or shared my videos with your friends posted about them like all of it i'm super grateful for because literally without those like without any of that i wouldn't be here so i just really want to say thank you literally for everything anyone who ever has dm'd me um commented liked followed me on other platforms subscribed to my channel like literally thank you so much um I don't think you guys realize how happy you make me and how grateful I am to be able to keep making videos um, and to have this really wonderful job to go to every day because um, it is such a blessing and a privilege to be able to do this as a job so thank you so so much thank you for everything i love you guys so much with my whole heart and i will see you in my next video and hopefully it's a good one <laughs> bye